Problem 5. The function g is defined and differentiable on the closed interval negative 7 to 5 and satisfies g of 0 equals 5. The graph of y equals g prime, the derivative of g, consists of a semicircle and three line segments as shown in the figure above. And this is another problem I'm going to kind of cheer about because I kind of like these ones where we get to do g prime charts and g double prime charts, but that's just me. Okay, so this is a graph of g prime. All right, um, the first thing it asks us to do is find g of 3 and then g of negative 2. So if we're going to find g of 3, okay, this is the derivative. If I just want g, I know that I need to take the integral of g prime. And I know that I want to find it at 3, so I'm going to put a 3 up here. And they told me what's happening at 0, so I'm going to put the 0 on the bottom. All right, now the integral of g prime will just give me g, and I know I still need to evaluate it at 3 and 0. So this will equal g of 3 minus g of 0. Okay, so a few things that we need to do. I'm going to find this value first. So if I want the integral of g prime and I'm given a picture, again, that's just the area under the curve. So if I look at the area under the curve from 0 to 3, I notice that I have a quarter circle and a triangle. So that area is going to equal, um, I'm going to get 1 half, Nope, I'm not. That's a quarter of a circle. I'm going to get 1 fourth times pi times the radius, which is 2 squared. And then plus, the next part is a triangle, 1 half times the base of the triangle will be 1. And the height of the triangle, even though I totally do that incorrectly, is 3. So if I simplified that, let's see, that's going to be pi plus 3 halves. And then, so that's the left side, that's this part, and then equals, I don't know what g of 3 is, so I'm just going to write g of 3, minus, they told me that g of 0 was equal to 5. So if I um, get g of 3 by itself, I'll add 5 to both sides. And so my final answer is going to be g of 3 is equal to pi plus, let's see if I put those together, 5 is 10 halves, 3 halves plus 10 halves is 13 halves. So that's what g of 3 will be. Okay, we get to follow that same process for g of negative 2. Okay, so again, we're going to set it up. If I want to find it's going to be the area under the curve, it's going to be g prime. And this time I'm going to put negative 2 on the bottom and 0 on the top because you have to have the smaller one on the bottom. And when I do that again, remember we get g. I get to evaluate it at 0 and negative 2. So I'm going to get g of 0 minus g of negative 2. And then remember on this one, to get this part right here, we want to find the area under the curve of g prime from negative 2 to 0. So if I'm going from negative 2 to 0, I notice that it's just a quarter circle, so it's going to be 1 fourth times pi times the radius squared, and that will equal, let's see, pi, and then equals g of 0, they told me was 5, and g of negative 2, I am looking for. So um, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So now I'm going to have pi minus 5 is equal to negative g of negative 2. And to get g of negative 2 by itself, I'm just going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So I'll get negative pi plus 5 is equal to g of negative 2. All right, that was worth 3 points. If you used g of 0 equaling 5 somewhere as you were working the problem, that was worth a point. Okay, if you correctly found g of 3, give yourself a point. And if you correctly found g of negative 2, give yourself a point. So that was three points. Okay, part B, find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection of the graph of y equals g of x on the interval from negative 7 to 5. Explain your reasoning. Okay, if I'm looking for points of inflection of g, I know that I need to do a g double prime chart. So g double prime chart, here we come. Okay, g double prime chart, this is g prime, which means I need to go down a level, which means I'm going to be looking at the slopes. So if I'm looking at the slopes, my slopes are going up until I get to 0. So they're positive. Um, my slopes are negative till I get to 2. They are positive till I get to 3. And then they are negative after that. So when it asks me for points of inflection, wherever g double prime changes sign, there's a point of inflection. So there will be points of inflection at x equals 0, 2, and 3. And it did say to explain my reasoning, and I'd say there are points of inflection there because g double prime changes sign. And so we should be all set with that one as long as it changes sign, they're points of inflection. 
All right, that one was worth two points. If you identified zero, two, and three, you got a point. If you were able to justify and gave yourself an explanation, you were given the second point. Okay, part C, same problem. The function h is defined by h of x equals g of x minus 1 half x squared. So we're going to tweak the g function a little bit. Find the x coordinate of each critical point of h where negative seven where x is between negative and 7, 5, and classify each critical point as the location of a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither. Um, relative minimum, maximum, or neither, and explain your reasoning. Okay, so we need critical points of h. I know that that is where h prime equals 0. So the first thing that we need to do is actually find h prime. So if this is a h, we're just going to take the derivative of each part. The derivative of g is g prime, and then minus the derivative of negative 1 half x squared is going to equal just x. And I need to figure out where does that equal 0. So I'm going to add x to both sides. Hopefully that will help me. So I have g prime of x equaling x. All right, so I need to figure out g prime is just the graph, so I'm just going to be looking at the graph. Where does the graph, and actually we're looking at the y value on the graph, where does the y value on the graph equal the x value? So basically that's saying, where are the x and the y values both the same? Well, there's one that's extremely obvious to me. It's right here, and that's at the point 3, 3, because the y value and the x value are the same. So for sure, x equals 3 is a critical point. To get my other one, um, I'm going to have to rely, this is um, going to be a little bit harder to figure out, but um, we know that this is, you, you might not know this, but um, if I'm looking for this one, if I knew a curve of that, that is actually the square root of 4 minus x squared, just in case if you were thinking that. Um, and on this interval, the x and the y will equal each other when x equals the square root of 2, because notice if you put in, hold it, The x and the y value will equal each other. Oh, so if I put this was d prime. Um, notice that doesn't make sense. Just a second. Um, if I put the square root of two in here, the square root of two squared is two. Yes, it does make sense. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the square root of two squared is two. Four minus two is the square root of two. Okay, so at x equals square root of 2, those two equal each other. So another critical value is the square root of 2. I'm guessing you might have had a little bit of an issue finding that, but if we could at least find 3, at least we found something. Okay, so now I'm going to make an h prime chart, and we're going to put square root of 2 on it, which I believe is smaller than 3, and this will be 3 because 3 is actually the square root of 9, so we're good. So I put it in order. And then we just need to figure out what's going on here. So if I plug 0 into h prime, so let's just check this. I'm going to do g prime. Where did my point go here? Okay. Um, I'm going to actually do this. So if I want h prime of 0, that would equal g prime of 0 minus 0. So g prime of 0 is 2. 2 minus 0 equals 2. So that's a positive answer. Okay, somewhere between the square root of 2 and 3, um, let's see here, is 2, 2 is between there. So let's find the derivative at 2. So this will be g prime of 2 minus 2. And again, I'm getting that from right here. Um, g prime of 2, so at 2 my answer is 0. Minus 2 is going to be negative 2, so that's a negative value. And then I'll test 4. So if I do h prime of 4, 4, that will equal g prime of 4 minus 4. The derivative at 4 is let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. It looks like I'm going to guess it's 1. I can't tell for sure. Minus 4, that's also going to be a negative value. All right, so it said at each critical point, we have to say whether there's a minimum, maximum, or neither. So I'm going to say at x equals the square root of 2, there is a minimum because h prime changes from, oh, actually it's a maximum, excuse me, 
it's a maximum because because h prime changes from positive to negative and this would be the time where we don't want to abbreviate we'll actually use positive and negative and then at x equals 3 I would say there is neither a minimum or a maximum and the reason that I'd say that is because h prime does not change sign Okay, so that was worth four points. If you simply even found the derivative, that was worth one point. If you identified both x equals 3 and the square root of 2, you got a point. So if you were just able to find x equals 3, you would not get the point for that part. Okay, then if you actually said at x equals 3 there's a minimum or maximum, that there's neither, you'd get a point. And then if you said x equals the square root of 2, you you would get a point. And if you said y, that it was a maximum and y, then you'd get a point. Um, hopefully, you could at least get to the derivative and you could at least figure out the x equals 3 and y. So hopefully from that part of the problem, you could have at least gotten two points. So that's what I'm hoping. Ugh. So, voila.